there, it, so I don't know that we actually have the numbers about the wage wages that are earned here, do we? We do, yes. I mean, is that a, you know, on a higher level, but that's right, right. how we... So I still, yes. to me, it's still a percentage of the whole of either both. I, so I am, I am thinking about households and what they earn. I am thinking about the available jobs and what they pay mm -hmm. and how they, how they change or both improve over time. Okay. So, so the, as objective, percentages. the objective as stated is there is an increase in local living wage jobs from a diverse mix of businesses. Are you saying that needs to be different? Well, so not just an increase. Okay, we went from six to seven, and as an extreme example, it would be to me it would be something like uh, you know we have I'll pick a number you know thirty two percent of the jobs in Issaquah are quote living wage, and so you want to increase the ratio of as know, a percentage of all right right so so increase you know, the proportion of living. I want to see a growth in the percentage of jobs that are living wage percentage I said right that's and that's my point more than anything you probably want to Offered increase the number sport. and percentage just as yeah. I'm thinking about it. that's, that's, that's what I was saying if some if a lot of people if a lot of businesses close but Costco or you know Siemens or something still stays yeah you, it's know, it's, not, you would do something like this you know, you, you know things you know, we know that there's growth will be happening and we're looking at this number and I think you know if there is you know at, at high level the tier of, of numbers that you're looking at <clears throat> Yeah, at some level we're tracking the total number, and if that percentage went up because the total number of jobs we just lost an entire retail organization, okay, that would be news. That would be an exception. We would want to understand. It would look that. good because <laughs> our but, percentage would go up, but that's not what we want yeah. because of that. We want it because we grow our the economy. The objective is we want job growth, and we want more of those jobs to be living wage. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not diversity is a tough word. Do you really? with economic um, uh, resilience? Do you mean real diversity or do you mean um, a job base that um, has isn't uh, vulnerable to specific economic cycles and we can wade through them a little bit better? So what do you mean by diversity? So I think a little bit of the, the last one where we don't want to be a one company town, right? Because um, I worked in Renton and when Boeing went down, you know, uh, in the economy a while ago, they had to, they had needed to diversify, right, their, their employment base. And so that's one of it. One of it is making sure that we have small, all sizes of businesses as well um, and, and types of businesses. So again, we don't all have healthcare business only because again, the healthcare industry changes um, <laughs> um, then you know then we're stuck with um, not as many jobs um, there are things so, that add yeah I'll just, I'll just want to clarify our economic sectors and focus it's outdoor recreation and tourism kind of grouped together sports medicine health care IT or tech and then service providers I mean if you're service providers the reason we have that is to think Costco basically management services service providers those are our four sectors of focus basically so that would be the diversity that we're looking for. This, this is a really s small nuance, but um, it, maybe if we have the wording that talks about a diversified employment base or something like that, because okay. when we use the word either diverse or diversity, it, it right. brings up something right. different. Right. And um, we probably mean a variety of sectors or something. Yeah, yeah, we did, yeah they're often called industries or sectors, mm -hmm. right? And, and so, and, and yeah, the word diverse certainly is, is applied, is used quite a bit, mm -hmm. but there might be a, a more precise word yeah. for what we're talking about here yeah. that doesn't make you focus. Seriously. Yeah. So, I, so, so I have a question about objective one versus objective four. Yeah, so I was just looking at, yeah. Um, Give me an example of how we could meet objective one and not meet objective four, because they they don't seem to be independent objectives. Lot, I'll, I'll speak to that. Consultant will give you extra credit if you combine these two objectives. <laughs> like what? We, we talked about doing that, but you can go you can go from three you can go to, from one to four, but not four to one. So number four, if we create if we if we bring in Pizza Hut, that that's not living wage job, right? But it, it is a new and existing it's a new business. But I think you just said if we do if we do one we get four for free, which makes me think that four is. Can't go back to one though, not always. What? So, 
So that, so if, if we meet objective one, I think you just said that we can't meet objective one and fail objective four. Like we would, we would meet objective four if we met objective one. Is that what you just said? So, no, no. So, um, I, I don't know. I, yeah, what he said, I wasn't quite sure if I was following it either. So, um, so number four is really kind of um, a lot of the bread and butter of what economic development's about. So, it's, um, and I think there was a real e a reason to keep this number four in. Because um, it's not, not, we do this every day, but there's some focus points that we need to do in the next five years. So, as um, we look at, um, we have just started to, really begin to work with small businesses and startups and that's something we want to really uh, enhance and do more about so that's a little one of the one of the pieces of it um, another piece is that we've heard is um, you know we have a, a Costco campus consolidation that's coming and it, it, how do we work with um, the real estate professionals to help uh, make sure that we bring businesses in or grow our current businesses um, I think number one well, no, I won't say that. Okay. So um, I th we went back and forth, and actually I think these were split and, and are, are kind of together, and then we actually split them out because one's really talking about the jobs that, again, that live work in the same place, where um, four is more about the um, helping the businesses kind of succeed here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, we've been back and forth. Yeah, number four one. also speaks to me to quality of life, having a variety of businesses to choose from to go and play or work at, or even uh, just to frequent, but uh, it's not necessarily a living wage job. That's the difference to, between the two. Is the key, John, for, thank you for pointing this out, Tola, because I, I, my gut tells me they're distinct. There's multiple ways that you can look at a population, in this case, a sample size of jobs. And, and I, I first read four, and I guess I did that um, action A is kind of what I anchored on. And you know what, if, if we wanted to um, invest in and help incubate, what have you, a, a um, kind of that startup and or that small business um, sector, mm -hmm. make sure that we have, we've knocked down barriers, we're actively promoting and assisting kind of the whether it be startup, and then you layer in there, and if you're already here, grow here. But I was kind of anchoring on that first part, like, you know, we, we want this to be a very good climate for people, for small business owners to get started. And 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 that is a, that's a different objective. It can be subsumed on number one, but that's a different and discrete objective than number one. So that's, you're focused on entrepreneurship, basically. And business. Well, I, I was taking, I was reading that into, into A. So to me, that is a discrete objective. <coughs> we I, 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 well, we, we oh, I, was, <laughs> I was starting to think as well that we could that we could merge for. I, I see your points that we could merge it with one. Um, there's one thing that's on my mind that I feel that we're missing, and that is when we talk about trying to increase living wage jobs or or attract new employers, they would have to have somewhere to go. They would have to have space to move into. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to attract them into Issaquah, they would have to have somewhere to be. And that is something that we, that we don't really talk about in the objectives, and I think it's critical. So C is beginning a little bit of that. Um, commercial real estate pro professionals and um, and I think a little bit of what we do um, in economic development that is an ongoing thing of working with property owners that come in and uh, redevelopment but it's not specifically called out here but um, I see what you're saying the other thing is I think that four addresses and one could is again the current businesses right that may not be all living wage jobs but because um, it really the action steps for number one talk about recruiting people in you know you're not really talking about experience trying to expand the businesses, right, as far as the action steps. Um, but we could expand those action steps to talk about how we support companies that have living wage jobs to grow here or kind of focus more on that. And so it gets then to having space to do that because you don't want them to grow and say, I have to move to Eastgate. Is that is one um, growth by immigration one? 
Right. Well, number one's Natural action right. steps. Retention. Well, I think we've got we've got tools and we have um, recruit a marketing recruiting. plan um, under recruiting. under number one. Um, but I, I I just think for me that's a huge miss if we don't talk about where Thanks. what we could do to try to uh, expand. We're talking about housing, but we're not talking about providing. Um, commercial space for a, if a business wants to move into Issaquah t tomorrow, um, where would they go? And would there be space available for them? So, does that belong in the growth and development goal? I think it belongs here. I, I really... Um, me, me too. I mean, there, I there's been an ongoing that. conversation Agreed. in the city about a number of potential employers that haven't located to Issaquah because of, for various reasons, not feeling like there was a good location that they could go to. So there's been sort of this ongoing conversation about how does the, uh, how does the commercial real estate market map to potential major employers. And I think it's a, I think it's a big deal. Yeah, I don't feel strongly about it. So the, so the objective is jobs and businesses. And one of the actions that's not there now is making sure there's a place for them. Well, that's the, but it's it's actually it's 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 a it's sort of a big enchilada in terms of thinking about what we could do. Um, so I see a marketing plan. I'm not sure that's exactly speaking to it, but planning that has to happen and incentives or or a variety of different tools or planning that would have to happen to try to focus on having more commercial real estate available uh, because if we don't have the place we, we don't have the jobs right. and and so that so, so just to clarify the objective would be something like to increase capacity for new businesses or expanded businesses yeah I like would that. really like to see that be part of it so I struggle a little bit I know we want to I mean, I agree with Mariah. I would like to see someplace, something, something someplace about sort of the, the marketplace for potential businesses. But I also know that we, we sort of want to avoid getting into the, the specifics of the action items, right? Yeah. So I, I'm just sort of wondering how we, how we address it at the objective level. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, you know, on objective four, so I'm, I'm still, I'm going to suggest that we should think about folding it in. Because here, here's why. Um, I think that our city uh, does a whole ton of stuff that isn't in the strategic plan, right? We have a police department that is, ensures public safety, that responds to citizens' concerns. We have a parks department that provides programs and, and runs facilities. Um, I feel like we have an economic development organization. It promotes and supports our local businesses. I mean, all these, all these things are things that we do as a city. Um, I'm wondering if, when I think about our city strategic plan, I think about that small number of uh, metrics that we're going to say in the next five years whether this has been successful or not. And I just don't know if four is that kind of a thing, or if four is more of a, you know, have an economic development department the way we have a police department and the way we have a parks department. I'm kind of wondering if you couldn't say this is going to be a really bad run-on sentence, but if you take the, the first part of Objective 4, there's an increase in new and ex existing businesses that choose to locate or expand in Issaquah, resulting in an increase in local living wage jobs from a diverse mi mix of businesses, and then work out the, the details of what those action plans are and try to roll them in, because I, I'm thinking as, as we look at some of the, some of the Action items are very specific, and, and they maybe could fall under what would be a tool or a plan. I just, just, yeah. just a thought. What do you think, Paul? <clears throat> I like having mentioning, in, including in the strategic plan. Uh, right. and whatever what I said earlier about especially the small businesses. I, I really like the idea that 
it is a it's it's strategic and it's worth mentioning in this plan that um, you know, we are a community that and are putting you know plans in we're we do, we're working to help support and grow small businesses and and I and I'm, you know, I'm saying that partly because. I know a number of small business owners, and I, and I, and I think that's something I'd, I'd have to go back to what we collected. I don't, so I'm not pulling this from the data that you guys all parsed through. But I, I believe that's a desire of the community. I would agree with that. So I'll ask the hard question. Is that in the data that we got from the community? Um, so this whole category was not there is there's a lot of, and I would also refer to DS to help me out. I think, as you know, this this kind of whole goal area was one that um, didn't immediately pop out from the initial data and the engagement. It was something that came out quite a bit more in the charrette uh, conversation. Absolutely accurate. Y'all are the city council. You, I mean, I, you, yep. you get elected to make decisions. Mm -hmm. so I don't think you have to just literally go in a straight line from input you got on a survey to policy. All right, let me ask you differently. Does it, is small business in, in this stuff in green somewhere? And, I'm, and it's not, obviously not literally, because the words aren't there, but is it, is it an element of, of, what, of what we listed up there as any of the uh, top uh, left first two top words top two words live work yeah and also retrain or retain oh. well I th again I think retention as an overall objective is distinct from what I'm talking about this small business community and, and encouraging yeah so that's I've yeah, so the answer to your question, yeah, I think it's like the two words top left. I, 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 I feel good about having small business in there and more of, I guess, the, the action plan um, section. <clears throat> Basically, at the moment, this is outlined that you have social and economic vitality as the goal, and you've got objectives related to jobs, affordable housing, services, and businesses. I mean, that, that's how it's currently presented. And I, you know, so. so. So what I'm hearing from my fellow council members is I think we should retool number four around small businesses in some capacity. Because I think business is well covered in objective one. But I think the thing that's unique that makes objective four different from objective one that I'm hearing is a, a, a strong will from my fellow council members to uh, that small business is an important part of the live work. Is that fair? And then what happens to that piece that you've discussed about yes. the marketplace for new businesses or assisting those potential new businesses to locate here? Are that, you are you suggesting that becomes part of one? Objective one gets moved. I think it kind of is, is, isn't it? Are you saying to keep objective I mean, four? In objective one, the verbs are recruit and recruit, right? So I think objective one is about bringing new businesses to the city, whether it says that in the language of the objective. Okay. I think there's an I'm implicit sure tie on objective yeah. one okay. around that living wage jobs and new employers has some, there's some coupling recruiting new employers and its relationship to generating living wage jobs, right? I'm unsure. I'm going to ask a question instead of the answer. You got, Tim, you've been in economic development for maybe two years now. Um, perhaps this hasn't got a lot of dialogue at the council level, but I, it's, it, I, in my role of liaison with the chamber, it seems to me that I have heard this quite a bit about 
the availability. I can specifically remember the executive director multiple times saying, wanted to grow but couldn't because couldn't find a place. Or wanted to locate here but couldn't find a place. Now, I don't want to conflate that, but I, bigger than it is, what has been your experience? I would say in a year and a half of working with the local businesses here and working for a half year and recruiting businesses, yes, that that is a major problem for a business. And why, why do you think it is? That we don't have the space. Yeah. Um, we, just, we just don't have a lot of land to work with. We don't have a lot of things that, we don't have the room to expand in a lot of places that other cities do. Think about the off the commercial spaces the way you named it. I mean, Emily's. I'm trying to answer Emily's question. It, it is that um, you know we can sit here and wish all we want, but there are for economic forces way beyond our control. You know that usually are going to determine how much commercial and office space shows up in a community or sure. that's added. Yeah. Um, and and I don't think that our intent with this is to like do whatever we can to get more. Because I think that's what I would compromise. We'd have to compromise. And that's not what we're saying. Um, so so I, I'm struggling with that. I, I, I like the idea of measuring it and knowing it. Uh, can, we, can we actually drive it? I mean, we've created a heck of a lot of capacity for commercial and office space here in the Valley floor. A heck of a lot of capacity. And, and we, need to, we need to do what we can to market and, and be there to answer questions and make connections. Uh, and, and, and serve you know, people who do come here wondering, asking. Um, and then we need that market to deliver. And I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm naive that we have, maybe we have more tools than I think we do, but I think that, that getting more commercial space of the types we want, where we want, is we've done mostly what we can by what we've done with zoning, zoning and land use. And the market's gonna determine the rest. Well, I think that some of what we could do could fall into when we're talking about proposing tools and planning, um, that I, I see those as words that, that may deliver some other incentives, or, or I'm, I'm not sure the words to use, but, but more tools that, that would be helpful in that way. And, and you, the reason why one and four are merging is because I'm talking about that as number one, but then when I see um, objective four C talking about um, facilitate business relocation and expansion by par partnering with current businesses and com commercial real estate professionals, um, I don't know if I haven't had a, a lot of opportunity to talk with you about it, but I, I have with Keith and, and just with the work that on the economic um, district, uh, economic vitality district board and the greater Seattle partners and, and uh, some of those uh, regional boards and being able to better tie into all of those. Um, so as, as employers may be looking and they're coming to Seattle, uh, they know about Seattle, but they don't know about the other communities and having a, a really strong tie that way, which I know we do, but expanding on all of that those tools and that planning would it help for action a under objective one where we talk about the tools and so right your uh total is right that we keep saying recruit so would it could we say um so we would assume maybe that some of those tools would be on the real estate part so recruit and retain employers so that way we not because because some of it is about growing within here so the chamber businesses you know, are the ones that are saying, hey, I want to stay, I want to be in this community, but I can't stay here because I can't find the space. Um, would that, would, would it be okay to be general enough, or do you want us to be specific about real estate in our objectives, but knowing that the tools will address, you know, commercial space, you know, addressing commercial space, addressing whatever kind of uh, challenges we may have as a city to encourage, get businesses to be um, more aligned with moving here I guess for me I'd like to see part of that called out as part of the, the planning because I think that if if we're just studying um, that we I think having it as part of the planning would be uh, would be powerful if it were okay so maybe market and deliver a plan 
to recruit and retain employers. Maybe that's where I should. So, because the next one talks about, you mentioned before, just about a marketing plan, but it misses another piece. So broaden that out. Yeah, I just like to see that. Okay. That focused on, in some way, and I'm not saying I have an answer. Well, yes, the market is going to drive what happens, but if we just let that fall through, um, we're we're not going to be able to concentrate on my my two cents uh, on that job growth, or we're going to miss out on opportunities. I so I wanna, we want to have time to get to the performance measures. I want to make sure we're focusing on do we have the objectives right? Because at some level, the staff is going to figure out getting the actions to, okay. to line up with the objectives. I think you, at the moment, you have four objectives. One's about living wage jobs. One's about affordable housing. One's about services. And one's about small business, as you modified it tonight. Um, I notice um, that we've been talking about jobs and businesses. We haven't talked about either affordable housing. You talked about affordable housing a bunch when you did your kind of brainstorm, um, but you didn't, you haven't brought, and then we haven't talked about, like services hasn't come up. And I'm interested, does that mean that that's not a priority or just? just I, I think we're, we're close to having one in four parsed here. Um, I do want to say, I do want to put it, it's not affordable housing, it's workforce uh, housing, right? Affordable housing means something different in housing. And housing affordability is not affordable housing. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. In, the, in the wacky I world in which you operate. I wasn't trying to right? recast it. There's a lot of ways to describe that. I don't use, what you, I don't just say living uh, workforce housing. I don't just say that. I, that doesn't say what I want to have Okay. I want a diversity and uh, ha housing uh, in proximity uh, that's affordable to the people that live here. Which is what this says. Right. Housing affordability better meets the needs of individuals and families across the income spectrum to live uh, and work in the community. Yeah. I think that encompasses living yeah. wage. Yep. Uh, whatever you said. Workforce. Workforce. I housing. should have just said housing. But, but right. affordable <laughs> housing. I boiled it down to it. Yeah, I'm not, no, no, I, I'm, I am specifically have all those qualifiers because I'm not just talking about low income, those earning less right. than 30%. Right, that's my point. Yeah, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. It, it's, I'm attaching that it's, a, it's affordability to what people earn. Both and there's some at 120%, yeah. and we need more of that. Yep, absolutely. Okay. I, okay. Matching house, uh, our people and our jobs. I don't think there's any controversy about objective two. I Is think there, we all are in agreement. Affordability better meets the needs of individuals and families across the income spectrum. I don't work. I like it. The objective, I do, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Huh? Right. Just reading through. Yeah, the, I'm, I'm good on the objective. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> is the services, I just, I'm just, I'm noticing, is this, a lower priority. It seems to me at minimum we want to put it at the end of the list because you all aren't really focusing on it. Um, you know, you know what I think is happening. I was sitting here realizing we do we have spent a lot of time on housing and services, and there's some familiar. But the truth of us, none of us are major business owners and know about economic drivers and what's really and how you make all this work. We are city government employees and and employees and, and other private industries as well. Uh, and we, we're, we're speculating to some degree on what it takes to be that job generation engine. And so I think that you're hearing that. We're not as familiar with that, how that, how that works. But we're very familiar with housing and services. That's my, that's my observation. So, to, so um, well, you want to talk about three? I think he's, and it might be as easy to, to demonstrate progress throughout the evening. Yeah, this one um, is probably also a little challenging. So our objective is um, kind of general, uh, in maybe some ways, access to services and resources improved to reduce inequalities in health and well-being in the community. And so, um, as I mentioned before, uh, we have the healthy um, strategy. community strategy, which actually we're going to be moving forward on an, an RFP um, to 
get more information about what those strategies are going to be. So, you know, in some ways we're like, hey, we're going to, you know, figure this out and then do and then uh, actually implement that, right? So that's what B is talking about. Um, a really is, you know, all the words you can read right there. Um, and so that's again. I, I, that, I have to, I have, yes, I'm sorry, yes. to interrupt. I have to stop you. I thought we didn't want to do this. Okay, sorry. I thought we didn't want to delve in go that's action okay. item yep. by action item. Okay, we can, so I'm trying to explain but, because but the guidance hard that I got from the administration was we didn't Don't want to. Don't do that. We okay. didn't want to I was trying to explain that. what what Emily and my health and well being. Yep. Thank yeah. you. You're right. Yes, thank you. Okay, so does does objective three in the words we use make sense? Um, it is kind of general. That's why. I would be the last person on earth that uh, to say what I'm about to say, but I. And yet, and yet you're saying it. And anyway. yet I'm saying it anyway. I, you want us to all to leave? I feel like. Well, I just feel like with everything that we have going on within this strategic plan, and, and I'm sorry, I have read down the action items and that's where I was getting a little hung up on housing affordability, but I stopped myself. Um, but I, I feel like some of, some of this we're already doing in, through, through the Human Services Commission and through our grants and funding. Um, it, it, I get, you know, the healthy community strategy is, is one that I would love to see. But when, when, I'm, when I'm reading, I'm trying to get context for what mm -hmm. number three means. And when I read through um, the action steps, um, then it's, it's having me question a little bit, are, are we already doing a lot of this? And I, I might have David yeah. give me feedback on. Sure. I mean, I, I think part of the reason why um, we're showing you the action steps is because they help to um, give a little bit of clarity and context for the objectives. I think absolutely appreciate that. Um, really, I think what we're talking about is the objective. Really, the thing that you want to have is the, uh, centered on, and the actions might kind of modify in order to make sure that we're hitting the objectives. But uh, they're here for context, so it's kind of an understanding of kind of what some of those things could look like and what the approach is. So, kind of globally, that's that's the case. Um, I'm sorry. What was your well? I guess I guess where I'm I'm at is there there are some things that have oh, come right. up within the strategic plan where we've questioned: Is this something that our uh, that your department and the Human Services Commission and the grant funding we have are we already doing that work? Um, and that was the only thing I'm questioning. So so my very strongly passionately felt answer is we need this because if we didn't need the fact that we only voted 4-3 in favor of the Opportunity Center um, for the medical and dental is indicative of as a city we don't have our we don't have ourselves figured out as to the human services needs of our community because we would have voted zero to seven or seven to zero because we would have had a better we would have had more clarity as a community and i would say that now that i'm thinking about it from that perspective i i agree with this because i'm i'm passionate about this area but i wanted to ask that question is this something that we're already doing um but as we've talked about if we if we aren't calling something out in the strategic plan then we may lose focus on that or not have certain very important items go through like the healthy community strategy, yeah, not would, to mention I would also observe there may be things that you are recently doing or you have stepped up a like just the thing you just mentioned. You, you made a tough decision to do something that wasn't an easy decision that you probably want in the strategic plan because you want to say, hey, we're already on it. We're, we're making progress. You may, you may be there on some of your growth and development things. You've made changes recently that the sort of whole community perception hasn't caught up with recent developments, that they're appropriate. There's other things like police that you've been doing for years. You do it pretty well. Everybody knows you're doing it, and you don't need to say it. So that would be an argument in support of, even though you, you don't really need to do more than you are at right now, but it, that may be recent enough that it needs to be a clearly a strategic initiative that's happening. I've, I've thought about this topic uh, since we met with Growth and Development, and th this happens to be January 2019, and there's kind of a line in the sand, like we know sometime in the future we're gonna have a strategic plan. But, but real clearly, we've been actually very strategic for 
a long time on a lot of different things, just not all in a sing, uh, one comprehensive strategic plan framework. And everything we've done with our, with our um, uh, sub-area plans and our urban villages, it's extremely strategic. And what's not in growth and development is really says anything about do something with a sub-area plan. You know, those, 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 those bodies of work started a number of years ago. We've even gone through some iterations of them. And they've, they've reached a level of maturity. And there's now, it's kind of like, let's, let's make sure that we're successful with those. But there's no need to, because of, you know, the, how long we've been at it and where they are, you know, it's probably, we don't need to talk in the strategic plan about the central area, central physical area, sub-area plan. Others, we haven't really got started yet on the master mobility plan. And we're going to make sure that that's still in here because that was strategic in its intent and we want to keep that visibility. That's the way I feel. And I would put this as well. I mean, this com healthy community strategy. It's, it says strategy. It's very strategic in its intent. And, and it's going to run a life cycle and it will reach a point where we will, we will have a plan to implement that. And, and um, It'll feel like the central Issaquah plan right now. We're all very familiar with it. You know, we don't need to have a plan to do it anymore. Right. We're executing the plan. Right. So when I think about that, and, and I mentioned national mobility, and I think about this one as well, we don't have to have the park strategic plan anymore there. We're kind of done with that. So th I, this isn't done. I want it slotted yeah. in there. I do yeah. not want to lose the visibility. I'm in complete agreement. I'm super passionate about this area. It should stay in. I just want to ask that question. So, Thank you. Thank you. Doing that. I, would, I would make the observation watching this whole interchange that I think you're in pretty good shape with this goal and these objectives. My observation would be maybe move the number four up into like the number two slot because it seems to be that jobs and businesses is where most of the churn is and then housing and services are kind of need to be there because they're important but they're not at sort of as Pressing top of mind. If you're giving away like free haircut coupons, well then if we can go from four to three, I'll, I'll go with uh, Tola. I'm kidding, because you guys were talking about it earlier. <laughs> People are going to be like, haircuts, what? <laughs> you guys, they were talking about it earlier. I'm a cookie. <laughs> I, I, um, I want to be careful not to get into which ones are more important than other ones. I, I haven't viewed that uh, previous goals that the objectives had a priority based on which one was one, two, three, or four. They were either objectives or they weren't. And I don't want to, I don't want to the point where I'm trying to be asked whether housing is more important than jobs and more important than services, right? Um, I think you are hearing a lot of agreement from us on two and three, um, but is, there's a lot of agreement on two and three. Um, I still think, I still think out of these four, we haven't heard we haven't we haven't gotten clarity amongst ourselves about this whole question about um, the market, uh, the the real estate market, and whether that's got to live somehow at the objective, right? Um, no, I was I was trying to respond um, to something Tola said. It sort of felt to me that one of the reasons we were meeting tonight was precisely to provide some prioritization. I yeah. sure hope not. Around the objective. So oh, if, man. If we're mistaken, then that's totally fine. I right. think that is an incredible barrel of monkeys that we don't be. You want to get six council members all yelling at each other? Try, try to prioritize within the goals which objectives are more important than other objectives. Holy cow. So Am I wrong saying, on that? No. So the objectives are not prioritized. They just have numbers. So the number one is not more important than number two, as written on this document. I think there was a discussion about if we needed to have a tool to help shave some of the objectives that there might be some criteria that would be applied in order to do that. I don't think we're seeing that here with maybe the exception of what we do with objective one in terms of incorporating some of the other language. So I don't think we're so, at that. Right. I agree. A part of the conversation was if we need to streamline, how are we going to get there? Perhaps we need to talk about what's most important or what's most relevant to the criteria that we established through the elevator speech through the slides we have at the beginning of this presentation and therefore call you know the list a little bit so it ends up at the place where you were which is what should remain and, and what doesn't and and the meeting the three sessions we had last week we did reduce a number of objectives yeah, right. mm -hmm. yeah. in several places it doesn't feel like you know I, I took a shot at getting you to combine two tonight you rejected it fair enough you know I, I sort of think you know 
I withdraw my suggestion <laughs> that we reorder them. Well, uh, you, um, you wanted to, I think we can wrap up three before we go back to commercial. That's all sure. I wanted to uh, yeah, I think three was, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I sort of thought we were done with three. But it just sounded like we were all in complete and harmonious agreement on three. Uh, okay. But I, we, what, yeah, I'm happy to chat about it. So the, a, so the actions do give a little bit more context. If you had asked me about objective three without showing me any actions, I would have said, I think it's probably has something to do with, you know, this healthy community strategy. And if you're, the staff's thinking it's something significantly more than that, I'd like, um, or noteworthy more than that, please tell me. But if that's at the heart of your intent of it as well, then I'm satisfied with it. Well, no, it's hard because we don't know what the um, strategies of the healthy community strategy will be. I know, I know. So A it's and C ideas could be within those, right? No, we, we don't know the percent. details. We know a lot. We know a lot more than we did a couple years ago, right, because of the work that we've done. Yeah. And, and we have the advantage, we can stick a phrase in there, healthy community strategy. And that actually stands for quite a lot. It says something. Right? It, it says, I mean, you know, you could break, we could have broke that open and put maybe more in there. That's a very heavy phrase in there. Is, so, is but does this, a, does this objective, is it, is it significantly more, is, in your mind, is it more than, you know, I'm kind of, now I'm kind of ignoring the actions that are there. I know there's more, there's three, and one of them says healthy community strategy. I'm kind of looking at the, Human service department director person over there to, to say I don't. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. I, th I think the question is could the, could this just have a single action that says adopt and implement a healthy community strategy and figure that those other two things are rolled into that, or is there some other big intent implied by those actions? I think that's the question. Is that going to get that close enough, Paul? Yes. So I think the reason why we see A and C is because we understand, uh, we know based on some of the work um, from the needs, so needs assessment leads into healthy community. So needs assessment helped us to identify some areas within the community that might stand to have a little more attention and understand the uh, true nature of what's going on and developing strategies around that. Right? So first step in the healthy community strategy is confirming those and then working to identify appropriate roles and partnerships in order to achieve some outcomes that would need to be developed for each of those areas. Um, we do know that access um, to services is an issue, uh, whether it's because of navigation, um, whether it's because an awareness, there's some uh, knowledge that um, culturally relevant, uh, linguistically appropriate kind of services are not always available, um, and that's something that we know that we can take some action around. Uh, act, the service landscape on the east side is pretty dispersed uh, for some types of services. We know we have certain services like um, meals and, and food banks and things like that that are pretty well served in our community, but other services you might have to travel all the way to North Delhi for or whatever. Um, and others are, um, there are services, but they don't accept kind of the services for uh, community members who need them most because they're, they accept certain types of insurance or work, those kinds of things and so the other alternative is trying to facilitate um, bringing some of those services into town uh, either through uh, providing for services here um, by kind of opening up satellites or by uh, just increasing access by um, having a service provider come and situate somewhere here um, with more regularity so I think you can think of those as kind of couple of known strategies um, as what well, as the healthy community strategy is being developed okay thank you absolutely the uh, the, the purpose of the objective uh, I'm, I'm inclined to want to wordsmith it a little bit does strike me that in a strategic plan that we have an objective that starts with the phrase access to services 
David just named some of what that means in his comments. It just seems like a really finely defined goal. Uh, it's it's very it, to me access to services. When when it's access is one thing, but it's got to be it's. But I think the intent really behind it is that there's just the, the presence of needed services as well. And I don't. And if we're intending that, describing it as having access to it is probably the wrong way. Um, I, I, it's, it's availability of services and resources um, is is in, is improved. We just, you know, they're, they're available, they and of course they they should be accessible too. So, but they have to be available. So if we just yeah, said services and resources are improved to reduce inequities in health and well-being, just just take out access to. Yeah, and and and, are you and I would consider access to to be part of the solution of achieving. It seems like a reasonable edit to me. Yeah, that was my thought about number three. It's, read it back to me, because I, I was I was Just drafting a, a different. Take, remove the first two words. Remove access to. Services and resources are improved. are improved to reduce inequality. Sure. I mean, I was, I, I had, I, I put it in a there is, because there's a couple of there is. I did it, there is an increase in services and resources to reduce inequities in health and well being in the community. But services and resources are improved is fine too. Well, the word improved and increase are two different goals. So if we are, I'm just, I'm just thinking if. I'm fine with improved. Because we could be increasing access to services and improving. Sorry, I'm. You think we? Yeah, I just think at an objective level, ac access is what David said. It is. Yeah. That's what it means to me. No, that and, makes and sense. And it certainly, yeah. it absolutely does fold up into you know improved services and resources. I guess I'm just asking the question whether we are also trying to increase the services and resources. Are we just trying to improve the access or to increase because we were talking about potentially working with partners to locate here? So I, heard, I think what I heard is taking out access because access is kind of a sub-strategy, if you will, to uh, the improvement. Um, and I think the second part of what I'm hearing is, is improve good or does it need to be increased? Or does it matter? Oh. Y'all want Take it away. everybody okay. to have better services. I think that's the point. We want it, we, it, the services that people need. We want those needs met. So why don't why don't we give that direction to staff to recraft the objective to not just be about access, but to be that availability of services is better. You guys good? Yeah. So, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure you I'm okay. I'm okay. I still think they're two different things, but I but but I'm I think I think we have the intent. Yeah, I think we've got the intent. So we're good with two and three? All right. We're close on one and four, but I, I think there's still this question about this perception that I mean here's here's the question, right? If if REI had decided to come here, if they had woken up one day and said, by golly, we want to be in Issaquah because there's are awesome. salt in the wound for the rest of my life. <laughs> would, we have had, would we have had the ability to accommodate them? Yes. Yes, yes they would have. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. yes. did. Yes, we did. And, and if not the location they were looking at, there were other spots. Yeah. All right, so let uh, Okay, fine. I stepped on. I finally stepped on. I clearly what is a big, something I don't understand in your guys' reaction. But let me pick a different. Let me pick a, a, a different company. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or somebody. Somebody else. Yeah, my 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 company looked here. 
and, and didn't feel there was any real estate that met our needs. So, so can we be specific about that? Is it is it uh, the type of space, the, the cost of the space? The it was a combination of. I should. I, I and maybe I it's too. I I know of a number of companies that feel like they couldn't. There was some combination of you know shirt sleeve and commercial space. Uh, in various combinations where they felt, I, I've heard a number of cases now of companies that felt like they couldn't find something that met their needs at its core. So I think it comes down to um, square footage and and maybe just even build out the, uh, of the buildings, but I, I think square footage is is probably like if you ask me what the top thank you the top point to make I think it would be that it's just that if so if a company says a CEO wakes up and says I've got you know I I'm gonna move here maybe this comes through you know the, the um, greater Seattle partners and they right. say I'm gonna move to Issaquah and I have 400 employees and I need this much square footage yeah. um, and they're, maybe they're even falling within one of the sectors that we're really interested in. Mm -hmm. Do we have the space, or is it more like, well, if this happens and this happens and this happens, then maybe in 2020, yes, we could accommodate that, or um, or do we lose out because they're saying we want to move now? Isn't we, the council's intention quite clear, at least the three of you, that you want more businesses and, you know, mm -hmm. a variety of types, and you want more jobs? Isn't that really the message that the objective needs to say? And if you're not meeting that, you want to kick the staff in the butt and say, what, what is it we got to change? You know, bring us a zoning change or bring us a three well, more staff people for the economic development department or whatever it is you need. So 15 minutes ago when you, when you read off the four, you said the first one was about living wage jobs and the fourth one was about small businesses, right? And my point is that I think lurking out here beyond living wage jobs and beyond small businesses is this other question about whether we have the physical environment to support those kinds of, and I, I just but don't know. But that's a tactic. The point is you want more businesses and more jobs is the objective. Well, right now what we've got is yes we want more living wage jobs and, and then we have one for more fully supporting small businesses I mean, yeah I, I see that as a I, I'm not sure I see it as a tactic because again just in the scenario that I just provided if somebody if a CEO says I have 500 employees I'm moving from Alabama and I need space tomorrow and there's not space to, that's the loss of 500 living wage jobs that we could have had. Oh yeah, absolutely, I'm not, I'm not yeah. debating your point at all. I'm just saying, does it need to be a headline that we need more space? I, 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 maybe, maybe it is, I just, I, it, it seemed to me that, you know, I can think of a whole bunch of reasons that a business would or wouldn't locate, yeah. and certainly availability of the right real estate is absolutely one of them. Right. But you know the taxing structure, you know the regulations, yeah. the and, 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 and quality of the workforce, the right. housing, and all these other things. And, 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 and yet. When those of us who have talked to companies that have chosen not to come to Issaquah, nobody ever says, we didn't come to Issaquah because of the traffic, or we didn't come to Issaquah because of the taxes, or we didn't come to Issaquah because of the school system, or we didn't come to Issaquah because there, weren't, there wasn't executive housing, right? I think that those of us who have talked to potential employers feel all those check boxes are either good or sufficient in the case of traffic, which I would never call good. Um, but the one that we keep hearing about is not. Maybe it's a big enough problem that you need to name. Well, I, I, I said what I thought earlier. Um, uh, I think we've done, we've moved the big box to, to, to create the potential for there to be commercial space here. But we've got competitors in, in nearby jurisdictions, and they've got, they've got proximity to amenities, and, and we're, it's a competitive landscape. 
market will decide when some property owner or developer says it's time for more office space in Issaquah because it looks like there's a bunch of people from Alabama landing up to come here. And you know what? Uh, they look like they're reaching saturation in Bellevue. Issaquah is my next place to develop. I, I'm saying is we can, maybe I don't know enough, maybe just a, I'm ignorant about this, but, but I don't know how the city with a capital C solves that problem. More than what we've already done. I think there, when it comes to the availability of commercial space, we've done we've done what we can do, and maybe we can fine tune that. Uh, but it's then it's going to be uh, these other efforts about recruiting and, and the economy and what's happening nearby, uh, and the market will drive the creation of space to meet meet the demand. And yeah, and and, and honestly, <laughs> all of this is you know when. In, in 2041, it'll be way different. I think. I think. I think uh, that regional transit with train will make a big difference. And that's. I mean, we'll feel it then with the market. So, so that my answer to your question is, is I don't. I don't. It seem, would seem odd to me to put it in as an action because I'm not sure how this group would succeed at that. All right. That that's. That's a fair point. I, you know, having said I didn't want to go into action items, I can't think of what the specific action item would be to support that part of it. What, what do you think, Ryan? I think as long as we are able to, from overall, when I read the objective, if we're going to keep it as there's an increase in local living wage jobs from a diverse mix of businesses, that I'm good with that objective. And um, I think that we are kind of delving into the action plans. But I just feel like it's so incredibly important to call this out. And so when we're talking about planning and we're talking about tools, I want to make sure that that is specifically called out there. And I think that if it is, then I'll be good. I'll, I'll feel better. You know, I'm ha my reaction is perhaps it's certainly the amount of commercial space is absolutely something to measure because it could be part of our analysis of why we may or may not be succeeding in the other goals could partially be told by that story. Right. It's certainly something to measure. I think that might have been in the presentation. I'm, I don't have the presentation with me that I was just talking about earlier that Keith had brought to. No. It wasn't. But we okay. can get that. We can get it okay. fairly accurate. It could be. It's part of the planning, part of the, part of the potential tools. Uh, and that changes, right? You know, over time. So, um, you know, if once Costco opens their campus, there's going to be a lot of real estate. Could be, potentially be a lot of real estate open, right? And so that's I think where we got. We get back to number one of recruiting businesses to Microsoft. to fill yeah. that space. And as Microsoft long as they're, has as two as long as they're ready to wait for when that happens in the future. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But yeah, there's other spaces that yeah. are smaller. You know, you, I'm glad you mentioned Costco. I was thinking about that earlier. We all know that there will be a change in our job demographics because of what they're going to be doing. And having a baseline now, I talked about percentage and the percentage of. I'm assuming most of those jobs that are going to come in are going to be living wage jobs. Are, you said it. And, and that will that'll yes. bend the curve. That will yeah. bend that percentage yeah. here in Issaquah. Yeah. And uh, so having a baseline before you know, that happens, obviously, is very critical. And then it does beg, you know, um, and, and, and if you didn't know the Costco story at all, and if you looked at that number in 2019 and then the, the Costco thing happens and you look at that number in 2000, five years later in, in 2024, and you look at that change, you go, wow, you guys killed it. You guys crushed it. <laughs> That's a good thing to have things in your strategic plan that you'll succeed at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all going to yeah. run for re-election, and you're going to want to have. Look at you, did. And 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 <coughs> but our tendency would we go? Well, I can explain that, and then, so it didn't really meet my objective. Yeah. That would be the tendency, right? Right, that's the tendency. But 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 we but did other. We that's did a lot not work. what you know. Then we're not capturing our strategic objective well. Then, but but I think we are, and we just have to resist that tendency, because. Hey man, you know we shouldn't overlook that. I'm not sure what that number is going to be. Do you have any idea what the number of new employees that they thousand thousand right? 
You know, if you're sitting there, like, hey, listen, I, I think I can see a thousand more jobs in this time frame. We'd go, oh my gosh, what do we need to do to make sure you su that succeeds, right? I mean, right. that would be big. That'd be huge. And then, and then it's also the companies that want to be near Costco, right? Yeah, so they, not just the vendors, but the other service there providers. Is an ecosystem. And so there's, there is there's an ecosystem. There is an ecosystem that's right. important. So then that gets to the space for them as well, right? right. So, right. Um, yeah. So right. we hope that, that growth brings other growth. So you know, we have one we might be able to achieve. Uh, so I, I, I think it sounds like the three of us are good with the four objectives. And, and I, the I fourth wanted, one is small business focus, correct? I just want to make sure. Well, you know, I saw... So things are evolving in my mind. I was the one who put that finer point on small business, and then as I read it again, especially, I yes, I did look at the action. Um, in the objective, you use the word expand. Yeah. And that applies to businesses that are already here. And. And I can also think about objective number f number four as as in improving our services and what we can do to help existing businesses succeed. Mm -hmm. And whereas number one is is like is recruitment and and, and it's it's a different thing. It's measured by the how much is what type of jobs we get, and it may include recruitment or facilitating you know Costco's next one. Four is a sub fundamentally different because it's about services to those that are here, including small businesses. And and it almost fits within that. What's that other uh, goal that strategy area that we have that has to do with city operations? City, city leadership, leadership and services. services. That definitely, especially with action two, I looked at B and under there. Uh, um, you know, definitely goes into that services domain, doesn't it? Of objective some number of it, four. Yeah. Some of it, some, not all of it, but yeah. B for sure. Yeah, yeah that's what I meant. That's what yeah. I meant. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so anyway, what's evolved for me is I, if, uh, if so I'm, that's kind of a question. Is, is B, is objective four speaking more to those that are already here? I is that think, some I of the intent and staff by putting it together? And, right? the, and the startup, yeah. Um, no, I, th I think it's both, but it's, uh, so it's trying to increase, I think he said before, the number of businesses and dealing with the business perspective and the climate. So um, helping that small business grow, helping the startups start up and actually be able to succeed here, but also that real estate professional bringing people in. So, um, but it had, I think it really has to do around the, the business, uh, the climate, so making sure things are working for businesses, like you said. Right. So we heard it last night from Rally. They even put it on their slide. You know, sometimes the permitting, they said something like, this isn't as been as smooth as we wished it would be, or it's whatever. They characterized it somewhat. I've certainly heard it. Even I know we've made a lot of improvements and changes in DSD over the year, but still that is a reoccurring issue that I hear, and, and I don't know how much, you know, to attach to it, but I still, I still hear about that. I'm a, I was assuming that's in there as an action because staff is also very sensitive yeah. to this is an area for service improvement that in front of, that we can mm -hmm. that we should take advantage of. So that's my question is as to you is as an objective stand out here. How much of this really is kind of taking care of those that are already here? Is it, or is that an oversimplification? I don't remember words in your mouth. It's, it's an oversimplification, but it does. It does address that because I think again in, in number one we're mostly talking about that recruit right and so this does address that more than any other right. um, objective. So from a strategic perspective, within this within this um, uh, goal, the goal. Mm -hmm. having an objective of that type is very would be very important to me as its own distinct objective. I'm looking at the economic development. <laughs> yeah. So. I want to call everybody's attention. We've got 20 minutes left. We haven't talked about performance measures at all. So I'm, I guess what I'm asking, it, there is an increase in new and existing businesses that choose to locate and expand in Issaquah. Are you wanting to say, take out new? And I, I don't. And I heard Tola say maybe this is small businesses, but. Well, I put the fine point on that. But yeah, I, in trying to understand that, I'm wondering if that type of reading helps the way I just read it to you as
because if one is on new and four is on existing. I actually, things make more sense to me if we've got the first one focused on jobs and the fourth one focused on businesses of all types and then if we want to call out small business or, or some other specifics that those could be added to the action plans. I, I actually like the way the objective is written with new and existing businesses that choose to locate or expand. I feel like we're covering everything and it certainly doesn't preclude small business but I see your point about I mean to me there's so many great small businesses in Issaquah so I would think that if maybe if we could add something under the action plan that talks about small businesses which, which in there particular. is which there is hey. so yeah yeah I like the idea of one being about jobs and four being about businesses okay. it seems like a great idea there okay Are we okay with that Leave it as good. awesome. Thank Jobs. You. All right. Thank you. Let's um, try and spend a few minutes talking about um, the uh, performance measures. Um, we would really lo love to see you not have a whole ton of performance measures because I think as you monitor this plan over time, you want to be able to look at like one page that says, How are we doing on the plan? And could I, how many of these could you get on one page without using four point type? Um, you know, but it seems to me like 10 or something for the whole plan or maybe 15 would be plenty. And if you have 30 or 40, you won't be able to interpret it because it's just blowing your mind. That doesn't mean staff isn't going to measure a whole bunch of stuff. And if you want to know the details on something, you can't go get it. But when they bring you the scorecard once in a while and say, this is how we're doing on the strategic plan, what are the big moves that you really want to have there? And um, I have to praise Tola for his careful reading because I was thinking, this is great. We got five job growth, business growth, <laughs> housing cost burden, live and work, and uh, supportive services. I thought, okay, there's five. I wish it was four, but, and then you read it and figured out that there was actually 25, but. <laughs> 11. <laughs> um, so that was a good point. So I guess what I would, could we spend 15 minutes talking about what are the big things, that, you know, if, are there a handful? A hand has five fingers on it. Are there a handful of things that you, you would love to have on the scorecard about um, social and economic vitality? So let me suggest to my fellow council members that if, if goal number one is around living wage jobs, I think the percentage of housing burdened, uh, percentage of residents that are housing burdened could be a single number that carries with it a, a, lot, of, a lot of useful information. going to connect living wage jobs with that? Yeah. Are, are, are you I, I think I, jobs, that, if, if, that work? I, I think if, if you have alignment between those two things, you will have a lower uh, housing uh, percentage of residents who are housing burdened. I, I would still want to see the jobs. Two. Sorry. Go ahead. I mean, you just explained it. If you have both, you'll see this. So... So I was trying to just get down to a single number. I, know, I was I inspired by Brian. But <laughs> if it's two, if it's two, that's fine. Well, I said earlier, what I, th I think the job growth, I think it's a percentage of these type of jobs as, as a percentage of the total. That's what I think the measure is. Total jobs and living wage jobs. I'm not, oh, I'm yeah, not I wasn't I'm arguing with you. I was just trying to clarify what you were saying. Yeah, you know, you're... You had to mention like the scorecard, right? And that that I think. And there's it's pretty easy to put two dimensions on a single measure, you know, in a single yeah. chart or graph. Yeah. And if total jobs charted with, uh, you know, somehow shown in relation, um, living wage jobs shown in relationship to total jobs, and you can see the trends of those over time, then ultimately that's what you want. Oh, that yeah, that does number one for me. Okay, total okay. and living wage jobs. That's one. Okay. Um, All right. I'll buy that. But total. Jobs. So total jobs and living, living wage, wage jobs. Yeah, living wage. because I feel like if we we've got four objectives, then we have maybe like a performance measure goes with each one of them. Right. I tried that. Yeah. And okay. The feedback was two for the first one, and I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So these aren't complex. They are discrete, but they are 
significant measures. I think when you look at a, a count is a very discrete thing. It's not complex. It does tell you something. Um, and I have often thought, wouldn't it be great if we could, you know, what's, um, you know, if, if we could have the gross Issaquah, gross, like the, the economy's Which gross domestic yeah, GDP of Issaquah, like that would be interesting, right? I mean, that's an economic, that's a big, that's, that's a goal of the goal in, in, in one of them, right? Uh, the total domestic product. Um, and I think that's what you're suggesting with total revenue because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's goods and services. But it's not all economic, because we, we are an economic, the city with a capital C is an economic engine as well. So if you meant that by that, then I think that's a good one. For which goal, sorry? The, the business growth. Oh, number four. Yeah. So to total business re revenue? Well, I'm yeah, it's hard to just do business, oh, I'm sorry. Not all metrics are the same. Account is very simple. It's not complex, right? And it can tell a lot. I'm, I'm just trying to understand. You're, you're well, I'm just repeating myself. I said, I said that business, that that count is helpful. So total business revenue. Sorry. Total because we have total number of jobs and business revenue, but you could you could add, you know, 17 sole practitioners who have LLCs, and it, it's not, so I, I would probably do revenue or. Yes, yeah, so so I'd vote for two, I would say yeah, the same thing. Yeah, that's what I, I think we're saying the same thing. Same thing. Total business revenue. If, if, you're, if your scorecard came through and said, hey, look what happened, the total revenue, of total sum of the value of the goods and services in Issaquah, is, this is how it's tracking. I think you're all agreeing with each other. Yep. 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 You yep. know, it, but actually, the way that I, sorry, the, the way I was just going to say, total jobs would actually be, I think, total jobs and the revenue, because we we do have the like if you're under a hundred thousand dollars, then you're not. Right. Right now we have. Right now we, we we are proposing three metrics. For number one, number of living wage jobs and number of jobs. Okay. And for number four, total business revenue. Right. Just to make sure, because I because you use four. Why did you say number four? It's, well, we're objective, objective number four. Objective four. For objective four. But what I'm saying is that then you do, I'm going against my own point that I made earlier, but then you do miss out on, um, like, any group that is under 100,000, then you, you wouldn't probably have a count for, I, I think counting the businesses, saying we, we brought on 100 businesses, but and this is the total revenue, I think both numbers are. Um, I, I do believe that you have to still report your revenue, but you're not paying B&O taxes on it. So oh, I guess I'm just thinking about the B&O taxes. Yeah. So you would still so report, you still have to report that you made $80,000. So we would have that number, just we wouldn't be collecting taxes on that. So we would still have their business revenue for those that report. I could be wrong about this, but I think if you make 100, under 100,000, we can talk about it later. Can you just confirm you that to, it behaves the Like an yeah, annual I'll, I'll ask the finance. You can find yeah, out. Yeah. Tell us the amount. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, this has an answer. You're talking about business revenue, total, total jobs and living wage jobs. Do you want yep. something? I assume you want something about housing. Yep, we haven't done number two and number three yet. So housing. Housing cost burden is on here. Yeah, there we go. Is that the one where we, I, is that the one where we do? Number and percentage of Issaquah households paying less than 30% of household income on housing. Would that? I just want percent, I just want percent housing burden. Okay. Because I want that number to go down. Dashboards or scorecards together. There, there's usually a measure and there, there's, there may be, it's, there's some sense of, is it moving, is it red, green, yellow? Right. Is it moving? There's some, and if if you need, there's always the numbers behind them. You don't lose them if we don't say it's the top thing yeah, that we want. Right. The numbers are always available behind right. them. That's, right. Right. That's right. how you construct you it. Is your guide and navigation, you click on it and it automatically comes up, yeah. or does staff have to go get it for you? But we won't lose it. I would say, I would say, as I, I'm going to, that second one in that number three under housing cost burden, the percentage is the metric that's most important. Yeah. They're okay. both important, but that would be the one I'd have in there. Okay. And then services? How do we measure that? Oh <laughs> so services, I, I was going to ask David, because when I'm reading 
the performance measure for five. Um, that's just a lot. Um, and is there anything with, with an updated needs assessment that might give us a metric that would be helpful or? So uh, honestly, this one's very challenging to, to narrow down because there's so many, there's such a diverse range of service providers and outcomes. Ideally, I think we'd like to be reporting, have a performance measure that's outcome related, um, but that's also challenging. Either kind of counting the widgets or counting the outcomes is challenging because of the diversity. And so I think this is probably what, so what we're suggesting here is that we do have good data on um, services for different residents served or service units for a variety of different services and so we are keying in on a few of those. Um, there are some issues about duplication of numbers so we just need to be uh, looking at those and tracking those over time. I think this is one that we would want to revisit following the completion of the healthy community strategy to get a little bit more refined on it. Um, this is one that's hard to kind of just zero in on a kind of uber uh, metric. The, the metric is developed once the healthy community strategy is formed or completed. I'm well, sorry. there certainly are Uber numbers out there. I mean, it's, if you want to talk about outcomes, you know, it could be average lifespan. You know, it could be it could be a percentage of population living below federal poverty level or county whatever. There's there's other ways. Mm -hmm. I think we were trying to yes. identify ones that were uh, reasonably actionable within the time frame. So, yeah, so uh, that begs the real. I'm sorry, Tola, if I may. That, that, so there, that and maybe the, where this is where there isn't perfect clarity, or, or I'm missing it. It's one thing to make sure that we have a list of actions that we know we can measure their outcome, and we have a way of determining whether or not things that outcome is what we want or not. But, but there are other measures which are at that higher level that are just really big indicators of things. And you might have to do analysis to find out what that is, and it may not be tied directly to one of your actions, but there are still effective measures of, 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 of outcomes. You know, again, just like you know, age, right? You know, we, we, we already know about that one, that um, in this area that depending, you can predict Average lifespan is pretty good by based upon where people live around here, and there's quite a disparity between South King County and North and East King County, for example. And so, do we have? Can we a tie? Can we action on that? No, but it would certainly would tell us. It tells us a lot about our community. So that's my. It's not. So there can be there can be measures and ways that that are very important to us, and we don't we don't know if we're moving that needle, but they still tell us quite. Can I ask if we can glean a metric from the National Citizen Survey that we could use uh, to track over time that would be uh, some sort of aggregator of several different uh, elements of that? Um, there may be. I, I would need to go back and, and look at the question. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a quick look, but um, there are perceptions of quality of life. Preventative health services. Be something about kind of perception of uh, access to services or something like that is customized. Yeah. We don't have something we'll customized. One. That's we don't have something yeah. currently on that. Health services. I mean, we report back on certain things, right? Around that I think of as human services. I wonder if, if there was um, a service or a resource that was added that. That, that might be sort of small and also convoluted, but if it was added, something that came to Issaquah that we didn't have before, that was one of the strategies that it, or action plans that I talked about. But that might be a really small. Yeah, I, and I suspect you know, with, the, with the strategy itself, there'll be a number of performance metrics for that itself, which will be kind of more granular, I think it's what Do you need a top level performance measure about services? to be determined post healthy community strategy. Paul? I'm good um, with that idea that the, we need more time to identify the right measure. Okay. With the K 
caveat. I mean, there, or maybe those bigger ones that already exist. Maybe Sounds we like can we get some ideas for that. There, yeah. That can wait for the healthy community strategy. Yep. Sounds like it. All right, so where I think we are is there's broad agreement on the goal, as stated, that we have four objectives. One's about um, a broad spectrum of jobs. Uh, one's about a broad spectrum of housing. One's about services. And one's about business, particularly small business. And I think we honed down the top level measures to total jobs and the percent that are our living wage, uh, total business revenue, uh, and percent housing cost burden with something to come about services once a healthy community strategy is done. Everything I just said in agreement with everybody? Yep. I think we did our job. I just want to say thank you to my fellow council thank members. You. Thank you. And to staff and our consultants for supporting us on this today. Thank you.